and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this is another studio tip, a short one, but I think a pretty great one. This is all about painting step one. There are many ways to approach a painting, many books written on the subject, but I'm gonna show you what works for me. So for me, what I do is, uh, after I do my journaling and writing down my goals and my intentions, and uh, what's my color combination? I get my color combinations out. What's my composition? That's the other big thing. That, what's the design? I've already decided for this particular quick demo is uh, I'm going to use the golden section. That'll be my focal point, and that's the whole point about beginning the painting. What's the focal point? So let me show you how it works for me. So my canvas is ready to go. I have it. I have it hanging on the wall piece of uh, charcoal here. I'm going to duplicate my little sketch right here. What do we say? We divide it in one third, one third, one third, one third, one third, one third. There's your golden section. And just like I had here in the sketch here, that's going to be my focal point. So I've decided that my dominant color is going to be red. So that means red all over the entire canvas. Let me show you the colors that I'm using. So I've got my red, but I have all the variations of red. I've got hot pink, dark reds, and a little bit of cadmium uh, yellow, orange, even some dark purple in there to throw in there. It's called variations on a theme, right? It's my underpainting is the painting that I start off abstractly, no matter what you start to paint. Remember, under every great painting is a great abstract painting. So let's have fun and let's start painting. So step one, this is all I'm going to demonstrate right now. Here is I'm going to put down the dominant color, right? Ready to go? Here we go. Step dominant color. We all can see it's going to be red. Big brush. Remember, under every great painting is a great abstract painting. Get in there. You know, I always like to think that the first couple of minutes in a painting, you should have paint everywhere. Some of it even on the canvas. So look, I'm just having fun right now with different variations of different kinds of reds. I have some dark reds in here. Make sure you have fun at the beginning. Always start off loose. Some people say, oh, I'll loosen up later on. Uh, like, no, you won't. Uh, start off having fun. Remember why you became a painter in the first place because it was fun So let's show people how much fun it is to be a painter. So that's the beginning We know where the focal points going to be next and uh, that's uh, all I wanted to show you on this particular one Hey, I got excited working on this painting. So I thought I'd show you a little bit more. Let's con continue on painting I paint all over the place all over the place. Get it all down. I mean, what the heck is that yellow in there doing? Well, I don't know, but it sure is fun. Now I'm going to add a different color. Remember, this is going to be... Huh, now we're painting. It's kind of that asymmetrical, the golden section. See, look where your focal point is. Still there. Still there. Now I'm going to kick it up a little bit more. Can't miss it now. Still the dominant color is on the red's warm side. Make it more dramatic. Drama, yeah, that's what we need in our life, right? More drama. So that's just the beginning. Hope you enjoyed this. So remember, if you want to see any more of these Bob Blasts, uh, I got a lot of them, just go to robertburridge.com. On my website there, you'll see, uh, just push, uh, see, archives, that's what you push, and up come all the other ones, there's a lot of information, and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Hi there, and welcome back to another Bob Blast. I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is a continuation of last week's demo, number 80. You know, there are many ways to start a painting, and I was telling you last week, this is what works for me. So if you recall the last Bob Blast, uh, how I started painting step one was I determined what the composition was going to be. And this one we decided was going to be the golden section. And also from my color wheel or anybody's color wheel, but this one was from my color wheel. Uh, I've chosen the dominant color and the focal point color and the two spice colors. 
So if you recall, what we did is I basically put the dominant color, red, all over the entire canvas. You know, scrumbling it around and scraping and scratching and having different kinds of red. It doesn't have to be just one kind of red. And just basically the first step, having way too much fun at the beginning and also making sure I knew where the focal point was going to be for step two and three. And now, now that it's all dried, now I'm gonna go into step two and three. So now that the red underpainting, the dominant color happens to be red. I got it from my color wheel over here. Uh, that's the dominant color. Now I go over to the second color, which is the focal point color. Here you are. Looks like a blue green. There you are, something like that. Uh, then the two spice colors, we have this purple blue color over here I put together. Over here is this kind of a Kelly green, that's spice color number four. Okay, the two, here we go. I have plenty of focal point color. Here we go, right up to the focal point. The eye goes right there to it. You can't miss it. I'm even gonna add a little white in here. I'm basically painting, and look where the focal point is. Straight there where we had pre-planted the golden focal point. And by the way, when I had that color on my brush, you know, I might put it somewhere else too. But I tone it down, tone it way down. Otherwise you don't wanna be in competition with the focal point. Now the next thing to do is to get some of the uh, focal point over here, right there, around, I mean the spice colors, right around the, the focal point. Like that. Tone it down, so it doesn't become dumb. Let's see, your eye goes right here. I mean, there's not that much on this canvas, but that's where your eye's gonna go. And now the other color, the other spice color. Two spice colors, and you put it close, put it close to the focal point color. Over here. That's what, in other words, it augments the focal point color. There's your focal point color. And you can do all kinds of other things with that, of course. And now that's starting to get pretty exciting. We we'll have maybe even some more white in here. Yes, I was painting with my fingers there. You caught me. And I'm going to go back and have some more fun with this focal point color. See where, what happens. You can't miss it now. You can't miss it now. It is right there. Look how the different colors I have there. So your eye still goes there. And I don't go too much further than that at this point because what I'd like to do on the next Bob Blast is show you the finishing touches. Remember, under every great painting is a great abstract painting. Always start loose, stay loose, and keep it wet. So that's it for this one. And remember, if you missed any of the other Bob Blast, you go right here, rubberfurnish.com, and there you'll see the archives. They're all been archived, especially for you. Just push a button and they all come up. There's a whole lot of them. I think we're up to number 80 right about now. So uh, next time though, I'm gonna show you how we finish this. Keep it loose. Hi, welcome back to another Bob Blast. I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is a continuing development, step four of the four steps that I use to do a painting using my color wheel. Well, you may recall in Bob Blast number 80, we did step one where we took the dominant color here off my color wheel, red, and put it over the entire, this is my sketch, okay, before I did the big painting. So this was the preliminary sketch. And then in 81, uh, Bob Blast 81, we did step two and three, which was we put the focal point color in, bam, there it is, okay? And then the two spice colors, this happens to be a purple blue, there's your purple blue up there, and over here your green yellow spice colors, just a little bit, but the focal point was right there. And now I'm going to now turn the same thing that we did as a sketch, the painting that I did the last time, now, hopefully, let's get this puppy started. So here's the canvas that we started the last time. Dominant red, the same thing. It pretty much matched the uh, color sketch that I had. On my table here is my palette. I have my color wheel. So the dominant color is red. Look at all the different kinds of reds that I have, okay? Lots of choices. Came back to my color wheel. The focal point color is this blue-green. Here it is, ready to go. And then the two spice colors, we have this green-yellow. Look at all the different kinds of greens I have with a little bit more yellow in there. And over here is the spice color. It's kind of a purple color. Okay, so it's, that's my spice color. And now, 
ready to go. My brush is ready to go. I add some white and some black on my palette too. Here is the sketch that I've decided to turn this into a floral, a very loose floral. We start off loosely. I'm going to have a very loose sketch here and let's turn this into the painting I originally wanted to do. So now you've seen the palette. It's a big table covered with plastic. That's my palette. Keeps me loose, right? And remember we covered composition. That's the golden section. I'll keep it up here just to remind myself. The color com combination, it's right out of a color wheel here. And the concept, we talked about it briefly. It's going to be a little simple, little vase of flowers in the sunlight. We'll see where we go with that. Here I go. Bucket of water, always a bucket of water. Here we go. I'm going to go back. The first thing I'm going to do is reestablish. Always, 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 no matter what step I'm in, I always go back and reestablish the focal point. Focal point's right there. Go, can't miss it. It also reminds me, I'm using my long brushes here. That way you can see the painting. There we go. Focal point. Still bluish. Okay. And the red around the focal point. Oh, let's get... Oh, far out, huh? Looking at my sketch here. Going into this even darker. Oh, wow. Always paint, I think all over the canvas, all at the same time. Don't stay in one place too long. Look at this crazy brush I'm using here. This is one of those <laughs> throwaway cheap brushes. I love that part. Reestablishing my lights. And to make the darks darker, I'll be mostly the dark red, dominant color, surprises. A little bit of negative shape painting in this particular one, isn't it? There we go. Crazy, isn't it? Paint everywhere. I'm already establishing that would be a good place for me to do the signature. <laughs> planning, planning, planning. I'm gonna anchor this. I'm gonna bring the vase down, anchor it over here. It's gonna be the shadow. Go back. We establish the shape of the vase. There we go. It's coming together. I always like to say, don't fall in love with it too soon. <laughs> Keep having that attitude of, let's see what else is going to happen. Remembering the color scheme. Still on the warm side. Whoa, look at that color. Woo. Paint again everywhere. Reestablishing my lights and my darks again. Continuing doing that. Paint everywhere. Yeah. Anchoring this. Gonna anchor that a little bit so I know where it ends. There's your shadow. Light's coming from over here. Cool. Really crank this up. Surprises. And kick it in even more so. Now I'm not expecting to finish this completely at this point, I'm gonna get it close. What I'm looking for right now are little surprises in the painting. Things that like don't make sense. Sounds a little bit like talking heads there. Doesn't it? Stop making sense. I'm going to make the brights even brighter. negative shape painting. Let's see that color there. Big brushes. Big brushes. Whatever brush you have in your hand, get a smaller one. You always reach for the smaller brush. There you go. I 
an opportunity there to reshape that with bottles. Yeah, cool. Soften this up a little bit. There we go. And one more little. And now I'm going to go back in and reestablish some of that. Cool. Get some flowers up in here. This is finger painting time. Yay! And back and put in the focal point color which is right there there you are in case you missed it establish it even more and now again the spice colors not a whole lot in the spice color just a little bit spice colors in there and the other that blue purple color really kicks it up a little bit doesn't it And I'm almost finished, at least for this stage. I don't want to tickle it too much to death. And for me, at this point, it's nice and wet and juicy, so I'm going to stop. And I like the direction, I like the beginning. It only took a couple of minutes. Oh, I like to work fast. Can't wait to see what it's going to look like, maybe. So. That's it. I can't wait to see you on the next Bob Blast. And don't, don't forget, though, you can see all the other Bob Blasts. Just go to rubberbirds.com. It's all there in archives. See you on the next one. But wait, there's more. For those of you who just couldn't wait, what am I going to do next after that one? Well, I could have stopped there, but uh, sometimes I always like to see what's on the other side of the mountain. So I just worked a little bit longer kept true to my color, kept true to the uh, focal point and the color combinations as I pointed out to you. And I just kind of cleaned it up and made the colors more true. You know, I was painting all over the place and, and still make sure that it's all, looks like it was done by one artist. So we had the same brush strokes all over the place. Okay, so that's it. That's what I would normally have done. Uh, continue on and uh, stay focused on the focal point, the color combination, and uh, certainly the composition and you'll be all right, but always stop too soon. If you've missed all the other Bob Blasts, remember you can always go to that one right there and you'll see archives, push archives and about 80 some of those will pop up and lots of great information. I hope you have a great time and keep your brushes wet. Hi there. Hey, this is just a reminder that I'm doing two major trade shows coming up right now. Artisan Materials Expo. Oh, and it's in Santa Fe. Who doesn't want to go there? September the 28th to the 30th. I'll be there teaching all day long. One more trade show I've got to tell you about, and you've been hearing me say it for almost a year now. Art of the Carolinas. Jerry's Artorama, you know that big catalog? Well, they've got a big art store and they have a major convention trade show in Raleigh, and that is in November the 8th to the 11th. You've got to sign up early because everybody's there. Why do a trade show? Major deep discounts and art materials. That's where I get my stuff too. Okay, people come with their trucks and then they just load up. You get to meet a lot of fabulous teachers. You're gonna learn more techniques from all of us. And then, you know, there are little lessons all and demos all day long. It's great to be with my people, artists just like you. I can't wait to see you there. And I hope to see you in almost every class. Hey, sitting next to these palm trees reminds me of the January workshop coming up here in Puerto Vallarta, 10 miles south of Puerto Vallarta in Mexico in January. It's a beachside village, fishing village, a working village. We're, we're having a fantastic time down there. I do it every year for many years now. And we all go down there and fly down. They pick us up at the airport. They take us 10 miles south of Puerto Vallarta and get out of town. 
And that's where we meet all the other artists and we stay in one casa. It's fantastic. They feed us, they wine us and dine us and the beach is right there. The atmosphere is wonderful. I do some of my best work there because we stay on the top floor that overlooks the entire beach area, the villa and the ocean. You'll see whales dropping all over the place. It's fantastic. I hope to see you there at Casa de las Artistas. I wanted to say it right in Mexico. See you then.